Hello and welcome to Marhaba Arabic 3.0. In this video, we will be discussing some more special characters. They are Tanween and Al Tarif. So we will get into what these actually are in just a moment. But first, if you have a copy of our Self Teach Arabic book, you know that special characters is step four of the four steps to reading and writing Arabic. And if you don't, and you would like a copy of the book, I will leave you a link below. Awesome. Let's get straight into the topic of Tanwin. So what exactly is Tanwin? Well, in previous lessons, we introduced and discussed vowels in Arabic, more specifically short vowels. Now they were Fatha, Dhamma and Kasra. So what happens when these vowels are doubled? And instead of what one Fatha, you see two. Instead of one Dhamma, you see two. And instead of one Kasra, you see two. This doubling of vowels is referred to as Tanween. Now, without using too many fancy terms, because you know I like to keep things simple and basic, Tanween or the doubling of vowel symbols just means we add an N sound to the pronunciation of that vowel. That is all and that is it. So what we will do now is look at the standard vowels and then look at the doubled vowels or as we now know it, tanween. So standard vowels fatha, dhamma and kasra. We know they make the sounds a, u and i. Now let's have a look at these vowels when they are doubled. Double fatha or tanween fatha makes the sound an. So from a, it just becomes an. Same for dhamma. It goes from u to un. And same for double kasra or tanween kasra. The short vowel kasra, which makes the sound i, now makes the sound in. So we get an, un, in from a, u, and i. Okay, in short, that is all to, uh, what tanween is. So... Just one quick note. With this dum, double dhamma, it is written in this special particular way, but you can also just write two small dhamma symbols next to each other, and it still suffices as a double dhamma. But you will mostly see this in anything you will read, or most Arabic text you will read. The double dhamma is just written in this special way. Okay? Next, we'll move on to some examples. We will look at the letter ba and the letter sin in their standard vowels and doubled vowels. And we will look at exactly how to pronounce these letters when they are vowelized or when they have tanween. So obviously fatha ba just equals ba. But when we have ba with a double fatha, it is pronounced ban. Dhamma, ba, is just bu. Tanween, or double dhamma, on the letter ba, makes it bun. And kasra, ba, which is pronounced bi. Double kasra, or tanween kasra, is pronounced bin. So, let's go over these quickly one more time. Ba, ban. Bu, bun. Bi, Bin. So just back to my first point where tanween or the doubling of vowels just adds an N, N sound to the pronunciation of the vowel itself. This is where you can see it. Ba, ban. Bu, bun. Bi, bin. Okay. Same with the letter sin. Sin fatha, sa. Sin double fatha, san. Sin dhamma, su. Sin double dhamma, sun. Sin kasra, si. Sin double kasra or tanween kasra is sin. So once again, sa, san. Su, sun. Si, sin. Okay, that is the main function of tanween or the doubling of vowels. Just adds an end sound to the end of the vowel sound. The original vowel sound okay perfect 
So you may have realized on the previous slide when a word has a double fatha, an extra alif is added at the end to carry the double fatha. So what we're going to do is explain why this is the case and how it affects pronunciation. And it, it doesn't really buy much. So firstly, the important note on double fatha. So only in the case of tanween fatha, an alif is added to carry the double fatha. Let's just say that the two fatha symbols are too heavy for the original 28 letters to carry on their own. So an extra alif comes to the rescue and holds them. But this does not change the pronunciation. Okay, so alif is actually a silent letter in this particular example or in this particular case. And its only purpose is to hold the double fatha. Okay, so what we'll do now is look at some examples to make this a lot clearer for you. Here's the word baitan. The original word or the root word is bait. Okay. But when tanween is applied, it makes it baitan. But we cannot apply or add the double fatha to the ta, the final letter of the original word. We must add an alif and then apply the double fatha to the alif. Same with the word shamsan, which means a sun. The root word here is shams. So when tanween is applied, it's not applied to the final letter of the root word. It's applied to the alef, which is added here at the end. And the alef is silent, so it just carries the double fatha. The word is still pronounced shamsan. Okay, shamsan. Because remember I said tanween, fatha, just makes the a, which is the short vowel fatha, an. So here, shamsan. Jisran, same for this word as well. Jisran, here, ra is the final letter of the root word, but we don't add the double fatha to the ra, it's actually on the alif. Alif is silent, so we pronounce the word as jisran, as if the double fatha was actually on the ra. You pronounce it in the same way. Okay. Lastly, wasnan. The last letter of the root word here is Noon, but again, Noon can't carry double fatha alone, so Aleph comes to the rescue. It's a silent letter, but it just holds the double fatha. So I guess the point I want to make for these is that when you see this and you are reading, just picture this double fatha as if it was on the letter before the Aleph, on the last letter of the root word. You would still read it as Waznan, Jisran, Shamsan. Baitan, and it is no different when the Aleph is there because the Aleph is silent. Okay, next I want to quickly discuss an exception to this particular exception. So, the Aleph or the case of the Aleph with Tanween Fatha only applies for the original 28 letters of the alphabet. So, the special characters Hamza and Ta Marbuta are not or do not require a alef at the end, okay? These two special characters can carry the double fatha alone. So now what we'll do is look at some examples for that. Here is the word kuratan. So here we see ta marbuta, kuratan. The ta can carry the double fatha, and we know double fatha makes an, so it's kuratan. Warqatan. Again, the marbuta can hold the double fatha, and we know tanween fatha or double fatha just makes normal fatha or the short vowel fatha an. So warqatan, which means a paper. Now hamza, liqa'an, liqa'an. Here again, we can see the hamza carrying the two double or the double fatha alone. So it's pronounced as liqa'an. Obviously with one fatha it would be liqa'a. With double fatha it's liqa'an. Sama'an. Again with one fatha we would pronounce it as sama'a. But with double fatha it's sama'an. Okay. Awesome. 
So now let's look at a few more word examples for Tanween. Fatha, Dhamma and Kasra. So double Fatha, double Dhamma and double Kasra. Just to clear any doubts you may have or any questions. So we'll begin by looking at words that have double Fatha. And this is just like from the previous example. Baytan, Shamsan, Jisran, Warqatan and Sama'an. Okay. Now let's look at double Dhamma and double Kasra. Baytun. So same word, but this is when double Dhamma is applied to the root word here, bait. Baytun. Shamsun. Same word, but here on the root word we have double Dhamma as opposed to double Fatha. So you can see there's no need for Aleph. It's only for double Fatha. So for the word Shams, when it has double Dhamma, it's pronounced Shamsun. And Jisrun, okay, Jisrun, here again, the Ra, same word as this word, Jisran, okay, here the root word finishes at Ra, so here there's no need for an Aleph, because that only applies for Tanween Fatha, so it's Jim, Kasra, Sin, Sukun, and Ra, double Dhamma, okay, or Tanween, Dhamma, Jisrun. Let's look at double Kasra. Kitabin, which means a book. Now, again, for double kasra, we need not add an aleph, so the double kasra can just sit on the final letter of the root word, and we pronounce it as kitabin, kitabin. Obviously, if it was just a, your standard kasra short vowel, this word would be kitabi. Waladin, waladin. Again, no need for an aleph. And if this was just a standard kasra, it would be waladi. But because of tanween, kasra, double kasra, it's waladin. And same for najmin, which means star. The meme here has a double kasra. Okay, if it was just one kasra, we would pronounce it as najmi. But because of the double kasra, which adds an N sound to the vowel, we pronounce it as najmin. Okay. Awesome. Well, that pretty much concludes um, Tanween. Okay, one last note I want to say, and like I said, this is a very basic level of Arabic to learn how to read and write. So we're not going to go into too much detail of what actually Tanween really is, but I will say this. The reason for the doubling of the vowels just refers that, or just implies that something is not specific. So for example, you would have noticed in these word examples, we, ha we are adding the letter or the word A before each noun. So all it does, the doubling of the vowels or the tenween, is it implies that it refers to something not specific. For example, a house, a sun, a bridge, as you can see in these examples here, a car, a sky, as opposed to saying that house or this house, or the house. So it just implies that something is not specific, okay? And we're not going to go into much more than that because we want to keep it nice and basic and simple. Awesome. So now we will look at the next special character. If you remember in the beginning, I mentioned we'll be looking at two in this video. So the first one was Tanween, which we just finished, and now we have Aleph Lam. Or it is also more formally known as Al Tarif. So let's jump straight into that. So what is Alif Lam? Well, firstly, it is pronounced as Al. So Alif Lam is pronounced as Al. And you have heard of Lam Alif, but now this is Alif Lam, so it's the total opposite. And when you see Alif Lam in the beginning of a word, it just means that the noun or the adjective is specific. The opposite of Tanwin, which I was just discussing in the last uh, slide. The opposite of Tanwin. So rather than saying a house, we say the house. And in fact, Alef Lam here, Al Alef Lam, is the equivalent of the in English. In English, we say the house, which is a noun, or the car, which is a noun. But it is being specific. We are saying the house, not a house. 
and it is the same for Aleph Lam. So let's just look at some examples quickly. Here we have Tanween, Baytan, which equals a house. Here we have Al Bayta, which means the house. And you will notice when there is a double Fatha in the Tanween, when Aleph Lam is applied, okay, to say the house, Al Bayta, you will notice that one Fatha drops off and it just becomes your original Fatha short vowel. So pronounced as Al Bayta. Same with Shamsun. So here it is Tanween, non specific. We're just saying a son. Shamsun meaning son. Here we are saying a son. When you see Aleph Lam in the beginning of the word, okay, Al Shamsu. Okay, Al Shamsu. Now you will notice again the double Dhamma here. When Aleph Lam is applied to make the word specific, one Dhamma drops off and we're left with your original Dhamma short vowel. So it's pronounced as Al Shamsu, the sun. A sun, the sun. Shamsun, Al Shamsu. The last example here, Waladin. So here we have double Kasra. And uh, when Aleph Lam is applied to the beginning of the word, or when you see it in the beginning of the word, it is pronounced al waladi. Okay, again, one fatha, one kasra drops off, and we are left with one here, so it's pronounced as al waladi. Waladin, a boy, al waladi, the boy. Okay, now I just want to make another quick disclaimer in a later video. Okay, we will cover sun letters and moon letters now. For anyone who is very fluent in Arabic, if they do come across this video, um, here, Al Shamsu, okay, the Sheen letter is a sun letter, so it's actually pronounced as Al Shamsu. The lamb becomes silent, but please, I don't want to confuse you, so let's keep it very simple and basic. Here, we're just going to pronounce it as Al Shamsu. When we get to the slide or the video of the sun and moon letters, I will explain in much more detail. So, the key take out of Aleph Lam, Al means the word, the noun, or the adjective is specific. Okay? Baytan, a house. Al Bayta, the house. Shamsun, a son. Al Shamsu, the son. Waladin, a boy. Al Waladi, the boy. Okay? Awesome. And that is all there is to that. At a basic level, if you can understand these, then you are doing an amazing job. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. And if it has, you know what to do next. So enjoy the rest of your day and thank you for listening.